Today's text, commonly known as the parable of the prodigal son, is one of the most familiar parables found within the Gospel of Luke, indeed within the whole Bible. It's a story about two sons who were alienated from their father. The younger son's alienation was his own choosing. He decided life was better outside the confines and restrictions of his family living. And so he made the conscious choice to leave. Considering the polar opposite personalities of the two sons, I have to wonder if maybe the younger son didn't feel welcome in his own home. Did the resentment of the older brother we see at the parable's end have its roots from a deeply ingrained rivalry that had always existed between the two sons? Did the son finally leave because of his older brother's endless jabs and sense of superiority? Maybe. But the younger son wasn't the only one alienated from the father's love. The older son was also alienated from the father even though he remained at home. But his separation was one within his own mind. I see him as always trying to earn his father's love and he believed there was only a limited amount of love to go around. So each time he saw his father looking off into the distance obviously longing for the younger son's return he must have felt jealous for the love that he thought should have been lavished upon him because of his loyalty and faithfulness. I'm a gay man and I don't set aside my sexual orientation or all the baggage that goes along with it when I approach God's word. On the contrary, I look at the sacred text through the lens of my sexual orientation. I read it from the perspective of a gay man who has felt at times like I didn't belong because of who and how I love. And the need to belong is one of the basics of human existence. So when I read this text, it comes alive for me, not in spite of my sexuality, but because of it. I see a son who possibly didn't feel as if he belonged, who maybe felt excluded, and so he left home. I see another son who, feeling excluded from his father's love, tried to earn that love by doing the right thing, never realizing or believing that his father already loved him. Today, within our own state of Texas, there are those who feel they have the right to exclude others because of what they call sincerely held religious beliefs. Regardless of how sincerely those beliefs are held, they have nothing to do with religion, but everything to do with prejudice and bigotry. Last week, Senate Bill 17 passed the Texas Senate and is on its way to the House of Representatives. It's a bill which would allow professionals, including health professionals, to discriminate based on their sincerely held religious beliefs. Equality Texas Interim Director Samantha Smoot said Dan Patrick has doubled down on his attack on the LGBTQ community, moving out of bathrooms and into every single licensed profession in Texas. Senate Bill 17 will create dangerous religious exemptions for hundreds of professions, from barbers to tow truck drivers to doctors. And so, is it any wonder that LGBTQ people like the younger son in today's parable have decided to leave their church homes when their siblings treat them with such disdain? Churches which empower and even endorse this sort of attitude. Is it any wonder at all the young man said to heck with this? I'm out of here. 
Give me what's due me because I have no intention of ever returning. But he did return, didn't he? When we're on our own, there's a loneliness that sometimes sets into the very depths of our soul. A longing for community. A pining for the love that will not let us go. A yearning for a sense of welcome. And so the younger son got right up and went home to his father. Meanwhile, the older son, who assumes exclusive rights to the father's affection, discovers that the younger son has returned. And he's not happy about it, even though the father tries to convince him to join the celebration. So unhappy, in fact, that he won't even share the same table with his brother. And that's where the parable ends. We don't know if the older son reconsiders or not. We don't know if he lobbies for legislation that would allow him to discriminate against his brother or not. All we know is that within the father's household, all the children are welcome at the table. And so it is within our own, with with within our own heavenly parents household too all the children are welcome regardless of whether we like it or not the banquet table of god's love is set and everyone has been invited to it republicans democrats and those who choose not to vote people of every faith and those of no faith at all. Citizens and immigrants, HIV positive and HIV negative, men, women, transgender and gender queer, gay, straight, bisexual, and everyone else on the sexual spectrum. God welcomes people of all skin colors, all economic brackets, and all ages people of every physical or mental ability, people who have received higher education degrees and those who have been taught how to survive from a school of life. We are all welcome. If the world was one in which everyone were welcome, every worship service might begin with the words like those which opened up the first Nevertheless She Preached conference a couple years ago. Your body, your person, your presence is welcome here. Your gender is welcome here. Your voice is welcome here. Your calling, your gifts, your radiance are welcome here. Your opinion is welcome here. Your experience, your expertise are welcome here. Your truth is welcome here. Your fire is encouraged to burn. There are no limits on your growth here. No interruptions to your speech here. No hesitation. Your strength is welcome here. Your wounds, your tears, your struggles are welcome here. Your badassery is welcome here. Your awakeness, your intuitiveness, your curiosity are welcome here. Did I mention your feelings are welcome here? Your sorrow, your joy, your anger, your exuberance are welcome here. Your skirt, your pants, your style are welcome here. Your soft voice, your loud voice, your high-pitched voice, your deep voice, your authoritative voice is welcome here. What if we said it? And even more, what if we meant it? What would that look like? You might say that it would look like heaven on earth. And if you did say that, you wouldn't be very far off the mark. It would look like the beloved community of which Jesus spent his whole career preaching about. And it would look like that to which we are called as God's beloved children. 
As I said earlier, the need to belong is one of the fundamental needs of every human being. God created us with that need. So why in the world would God condone anything other than the full welcome of a person who may be going through a sense of alienation and isolation? In fact, it's out of that sense of alienation that MCC churches came into being 50 years ago. Welcome is part of our DNA. And so this church does our best to create a table that welcomes everyone. But that sense of welcome should not and must not be confined to the walls of this building or limited to one day of the week. Welcome is something that needs to happen every day of the week, wherever we happen to be, regardless of the risk that may be associated with it. And there is risk every time. May we reflect God's welcome in our world. May we let down our guard long enough to look into the eyes of the person next to us and recognize that they are entitled to God's love and therefore our own. May we welcome both the stranger and the neighbor and in so doing experience the oneness of God's universe. Amen.